Now, the Payments Market Practice Group provide a truly global forum to drive better market practices in the cross-border payments space. The PMPG's goal is to help achieve straight-through processing and improved customer service. Now, the group is compromised of payments experts from across the globe, and I'm delighted to say that the PMPG representative for Switzerland, Dominic Vogel, he's the executive director and lead product owner for Instant Payments Transformation at UBS. He's here now to talk to us about PMPG's work and a particular focus on an important change request that the PMPG has recently raised to change the way that postal address data is carried in cross-border payments. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, the payments market practice group and, and can you give us examples of the work that PMPG does that brings value to the payments industry? Yeah, sure. So the PMPG is a group, as the word says, of uh, payments experts. We come from all across the world, from all the uh, continents and time zones. And we basically establish tech stock, develop and publish market practice guidelines in order to make cross-border payments more seamless, more uh, frictionless and faster. Um, we are working on, on market practice guidelines, especially now in the ISO uh, 2022 migration in order to ensure that the, uh, the users using that standards um, keep um, an aligned a form of messaging and, and interaction with each other. Mm. So why is the PMPG focusing uh, at the topic of structured customer addresses in particular? It's a valid question and now it's get, uh, getting a little bit technical but when you look at the payment you usually have an originator and a beneficiary and the both parties are identified with a name and typically with an address. Today, the address that is contained in these fields is unstructured. So you have everything coming in, in, in a field and you don't know what is what. And it, this creates a lot of frictions because um, you do not know is, is an element, a country, is it, is it a city, a, a last name. For example, in Toronto, there's this, uh, this coffee, a Little Havana coffee. And uh, basically Havana is in that context a name. Mm -hmm. uh, Havana is also a city, but for the context of, of, uh, of a payment to that coffee, it's absolutely uh, not problematic to use Havana uh, because it's not sanctioned. Mm. However, when it is um, going about sanctioned parties and countries, um, uh, processing of, of information, it's absolutely crucial to have good quality data mm. available in the addresses. And, you know, can you talk a little bit about uh, what action, uh, excuse me, what area PMPG, uh, what they've done in this area so far? Yeah, sure. So we have already published quite a lot of uh, documents, white papers, market practice guidelines on the topic of structured addresses. Um, unfortunately, the market, uh, the attrition, adoption of, of uh, structured addresses is not there yet where we, we should be. And basically, um, that was one of the reasons why the Payments Market Practice Group has now published a change request in order to simplify the, 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 uh, the whole uh, topic of structured addresses, uh, which is the hybrid address. So let's focus in on this, uh, this hybrid, this new hybrid postal address. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit for us on what it, what it actually means? Yes, the hybrid address basically takes the best of the two worlds of structured and unstructured. So currently in the address fields, you are either allowed to use fully structured or completely unstructured. So it's either or. So these two, the elements are exclusive and cannot be mixed. The hybrid address, as the name says, can be um, both. So it, um, basically what, whatever is available in a structured format mm. should be provided as structure. And, but the rest, like the street name, building number, um, building names, floor, apartments, intersections, whatever, can be put into an unstructured field. And now they can be combined together. Important, the hybrid address requires a minimum of uh, town and country. Mm, okay, so what action is now required on the part of the industry uh, to implement this uh, richer ISO uh, postal address? So on the one side, uh, the initiating parties, like banks, financial institutions, they need to clean up their data. So addresses um, and, and good quality data is always origin at the source. So it is very important at the beginning of a life cycle to clean up that data and get it right. So financial institutions need to um, ensure that the address provided in the originated field of a payment um, is structured. So that means that uh, onboarding processes, um, the way how storage works, how the mapping works into messages, that this is done in a structured way. 
And on the beneficiary side, it's very important that the uh, initiator of the payment provides that already in a structured format. So you could think of a web form where you have uh, not only one field where you put all the data, but structured fields. And that's where financial institutions need to guide their clients in order to get the data right. Well, not to put you on the spot, but let's talk timelines for a minute. When can we expect this new hybrid postal address to actually be implemented? So the change request currently is going through an approval, so country voting, Swift board approval, and um, by the end of the year we should have a decision and it looks very, very optimistic that uh, the change request will be approved. The hybrid option will be allowed um, as of November 2025 on, onwards, so no end date for that format. The fully structured format is already available today, allowed today, and will continue to be recommended going forward. But the unstructured, the fully unstructured version is um, intended to be sunset by November 2026. So after November 26, addresses in payments need to be either in a hybrid format or fully structured format. So if we want to follow the PMPG to understand how you're helping guide the industry on these uh, various topics you're working on, what's the best way to do that? The best way is to follow us uh, either on LinkedIn or on the website, PMPG Info. And there we publish always the latest news on market practices and uh, white papers. Well, Dominic Vogel, Executive Director and Lead Product Owner for Instant Payments Transformation at UBS. Thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us here on Thank Cybus you, Thank you, Johnny. Thank you.